I'm so very thankful to be able to be speaking to you today as just recently I wasn't. When attempting an experimental procedure, I began to experience muscle atonia, a form of paralysis that leaves the only voluntary muscles active being the diaphragm and the eyes. I then began to lose the ability of thermal regulation. The normal responses of shivering and sweating were so impaired, I became completely dependent on external sources of heat and cold. I then became disoriented to time, place, and even self. Auditory and visual hallucinations that were so vivid, I began to question reality itself. Fortunately, when the, the experiment terminated, I was able to regain all function. And as soon as that happened, I knew I had to make a decision. I had to decide, am I going to attempt this again? Am I going to share this with anyone? And I knew that it would depend. It would depend on if there were any benefits to be had because of this. I can tell you now, not only am I able to speak to you today, but my ability to has increased. Memory, both in terms of formation and recall, has increased. Physical performance, both in terms of endurance and accuracy, has increased. My ability to fight infections and recover from injuries has also increased. In every single measurable way, I am now smarter, stronger, and healthier as a direct result of performing this procedure. So yes, I will share it, and yes, I will attempt it again, as what I'm describing is now legal in all 50 states. It can be had without a doctor's prescription and is completely free. As my procedure was just to get more sleep. We all know that we should get more sleep. We all know what happens when we don't. We would never board a plane with a pilot who hasn't slept. We wouldn't want to get our taxes done by an accountant who hasn't slept. We wouldn't want to have our operation done by a surgeon who hasn't slept. But when it's our patient, our client, our student, we think we can get by without enough sleep. And this is a mistake that's costing us. Sleep deprivation costs us time, it costs us money, and it's costing us lives. As many fatal motor vehicle and industrial accidents that were due to user error could have been avoided if only the operator just got more sleep. So this is a challenge for some and sometimes can require immediate medical attention. And for these people, there is an entire branch of medicine, a department at the hospital, and a society that has publications and meetings. At these meetings, it is discussed that the most common sleep complaint is insomnia, the inability to stay or fall asleep and this can be for a number of reasons. One being that our patient was just too excited about attending a talk on neuromodulation. <laughs> the alternative is hypersomnia. Our patient falls asleep too easily. They cannot stay awake. And this can also be for a number of reasons. One being that they were attending a talk on neuromodulation. <laughs> In either case, our patient will seek help from a specialist. When visiting with their physician, they will list out their medications, medical history, and symptoms, and the doctor will then order a sleep study. Just like you get an x-ray of your bone, an MRI of your brain, you get a PSG of your sleep. PSG, which stands for polysomnography and translates to many sleep graphs, is a collection of signals. And these signals include the electrical activity of the brain, heart, and muscles. These, in combination with the movement of respiratory effort, airflow, and oxygen saturation. These procedures can be performed in the hospital, in the lab, or even at home. And during these procedures, a very common pattern is observed. Our patient falls asleep, begins to relax, and their airway starts to narrow and vibrate. And this is the sound of snoring, which can be very annoying and also very loud until silence, suffocation, no breathing. Our patient is now attempting to breathe against a completely obstructed airway 
and their oxygen levels are starting to drop. They take a breath, and because now the heart is experiencing an increased demand of oxygen at a time where there is a decreased supply, they again attempt a breath, and that movement is not generating airflow, so that pressure is being applied towards the heart, causing it to push and pull, squeeze and stretch, causing it to deform, causing it to fail. And while this is happening, our patient is still attempting to breathe against a still obstructed airway. The oxygen levels are now dropping dangerously low, triggering the emergency arousal response. What was until now rest and digest is now fight or flight. Adrenaline and cortisol fl flood the blood and now our patient comes up for air after nearly drowning and finally takes a breath. And when they do, their oxygen levels restore, they fall back asleep, their airway begins to narrow, the sound of snoring resumes, and the process repeats again and again and again, all night long. Our patient awakens feeling more exhausted than when they did when they went to bed. When the doctor looks at the recording, they will diagnose our patient with a condition called severe obstructive sleep apnea, a disorder that's been associated with hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. And because of every single one of these events is a traumatic stress event, they will also likely experience mood disorders, anxiety, depression, and irritability. So what can be done for our patient? The doctor may prescribe them a form of therapy called CPAP, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. A mask attached to the face, connected by a tube to a machine that blows just enough air to keep our patient breathing, keep our patient sleeping, keep our patient living. And this therapy does work and it works incredibly well until our patient rips it off and throws it as hard and as far as they can. <laughs> so what can be done for our patient now? They might be able to see a dentist who can fit them with oral appliance therapy a device that advances the lower jaw, allowing our patient to breathe, allowing our patient to sleep, allowing our patient to live. Recently, neuromodulation has been applied to this disorder in the form of an implantable pulse generator targeting the hypoglossal nerve. When stimulating this nerve, it causes activation of the tongue muscle, allowing our patient to breathe, allowing our patient to sleep, allowing our patient to live. But what of our other patient, the one who never fell asleep? When he visits with the physician, they will say that the reason why they're having difficulty is because of an unpleasant sensation in their legs, causing them to have an irresistible urge to move, and this urge to move is as strong as the urge to breathe. When the doctor hears this, they will diagnose our patient with RLS, restless legs syndrome. A disorder, when it was first described, it was called the greatest torture that was resulted in an insomnia that was first described as the watching evil. And what can be done for our patient? The doctor can prescribe medication. Medications with known side effects, side effects that include impulse control disorders. Patients sometimes end up with gambling addictions that destroy their finances and relationships. Even worse is, that is, is the side effect of augmentation a worsening of the condition itself. The symptoms come on sooner, come on stronger, and even come on outside of the legs. The medications over time become ineffective, leaving our patient with no option other than to walk and walk and walk until they fall and return to the doctor's office with injuries to their face and explain, I can't go on living this way. As patients with restless legs are at a 270% higher risk of self-harm and suicide. So what can be done for our patient now? Neuromodulation can also be applied to restless legs in the form of a non-invasive leg-worn stimulator targeting the peroneal nerve. This causes tonic motor activation, allowing our patient to finally get more sleep. So remember, you have a gift and yes, it is a gift. Do not waste it and just get more sleep. And if you can't, then get some help.
And if you're able, then be that help. Because we all sleep better when we all sleep better. Thank you.